All right, here we go with our video 6.3, Potential Energy Diagrams. And this is going to be a very close follow-up to 6.2. And it's kind of a weird thing because understanding 6.3 is going to really help you understand 6.2. However, we couldn't really talk about the Potential Energy Diagram without talking about the concepts that go into it. So if there were any questions after the last video, a lot of them are going to be answered here. All right, so introduction. Remember that a forward reaction is reading left to right in a reaction, showing that the reaction is moving to the right. In a reverse reaction would be reading right to left. The reaction moves towards the left. Right, and generally what we'll do when a reaction can go either way, we'll have in our reactants on the left and that double arrow with our products on the right. So when it's going left to right, reactants, products. When it's going right to left, the products turn into reactants and the reactants turn into products. Definition, activation energy is the amount of energy needed to get a reaction started or to form what's called the activated complex of a reaction. You must, quote, get over the hump in order for a reaction to occur. Okay, for example, if you're gonna burn a sheet of paper, right, it's not gonna spontaneously burn. First, you have to light a match to provide the initial heat to get it started. And then after that, the burning of the paper provides more fire for the rest of the paper to burn. But that getting over the hump, getting things started, was the lighting of the match. In general, that's referred to as the activation energy. All right, so let's take a look at a potential energy diagram. Okay, this is something that you're gonna need to draw out. Each of these potential energy diagrams we're gonna see in this uh, video, I'm gonna wanna see in your notes. So here we have on our y-axis the energy. All right. And specifically, we're going to refer to this as the PE, the potential energy. The x-axis, fancy term, is the reaction coordinate. Really just think of the time that it takes a reaction to take place. Here is at the beginning, before the reaction takes place. And over here is at the end, when the reaction is complete. And any point in the middle is just representing where the reaction is at the moment. Okay, so first, ignore the blue one. We're just going to look at the red one. All right, so here we have our reactants, and we supply some energy. Okay, so when we supply energy, the energy is going to go up, and we're going to add up here at the top. This point here at the top, where we have the most energy, is referred to as the activated complex. Right, this is the energy level of the activated complex. And then the rest of the reaction takes place kind of like going down a hill. And we finally have our potential energy of the products. Now in this example, we're dealing with an exothermic reaction. And I'm going to show you why in a moment. Okay. Now when we talked about heat, delta H, our heat of reaction, it's the heat or the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. And since the potential energy of the products is lower than the potential energy of the reactants, our answer is going to be negative something. And that's why a negative delta H is exothermic because if you think about it here's the energy of the reactants up at this level here here's the energy of the products okay where did this energy go well it was given off as heat okay so potential energy reactants potential energy products activated complex Now, enzyme, we're gonna do a little more writing about catalysts or enzymes on the next page, but the important thing to see here is, if we look at the blue now with the enzyme, 
It didn't change the energy of the reactants. It didn't change the energy of the products. What did it change? Well, the only thing it changed was the energy of the activated complex. It lowered it. It lowered the hill. So you don't have to put as much energy in to get things started. But however, this final delta H, the amount of heat given off, is the same because the energy of the products and the energy of the reactants were the same. All right, so catalyst. How exactly does a catalyst shorten the reaction time needed for a reaction to complete? That activated complex is lowered, or you can say the activation energy is decreased, or you can say the reaction pathway is shortened. Okay. Import, most important one of these three to remember is the activation energy is decreased. So a catalyst speeds up a reaction by lowering the activation energy. Okay, so we already saw a, an example of an exothermic energy diagram. So the, just looking at a different one and you're gonna to need to be able to label these okay so you're gonna to need to know that this here is the potential energy of the reactants this point here is the potential energy of the products this is the potential energy of the activated complex The difference between the potential energy of the reactants and the potential energy of the activated complex is the activation energy. So you're always going to be labeling that with an arrow from this line here with the PE of the reactants and this line here of the PE of the activated complex. Now you also have to think about since we've learned about reversible reactions. Not only can this reaction go forward, where this is the activation energy from here to here, can also go backwards. So now let's see, we end up here right at the products and now we're going backwards. Well, the reverse activation energy is the difference between the potential energy of the products and the energy of the activated complex. So we can see the activation energy of the reverse reaction is much larger than the activation of energy of the forward reaction for an exothermic reaction. All right, and finally, you have to know the heat of reaction, which is delta H. Remembering once again, delta H is equal to the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. And in an exothermic reaction, since this is lower, our answer will be negative something. Okay. Got a exothermic, always gonna have a negative delta H. The product side is always lower than the reactant side. Energy is released. All right, in an endothermic diagram, those last couple of things are just the opposite. It's a positive delta H, and the product side to the right is always higher than the reactant side, which is on the left, meaning energy is absorbed. All right, so we're going to label some of the same things we just labeled a moment ago. All right, so this here is our potential energy of the reactants. Here is our potential energy of the products. Way up top here is our potential energy of the activated complex. The activation energy is the difference in the energy from the reactants all the way up to the energy of the activated complex. And see it's a much higher hill to get over. And our delta H, as always, is the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. And in this case, since products is higher than reactants, our 
answer is going to be positive something. That's why we have a positive delta H. Once again, we can think about the reverse reaction. And we can see here with an endothermic reaction, right, going forward, the activation energy was really high. The reverse reaction, that activation energy is lower. So for an endothermic reaction, reverse, the activation energy is lower than the forward reaction. All right, I know that was a lot, guys. Here we are with question time, okay? Study, go back if you need to, to study the different parts of the uh, potential energy diagrams that I labeled for you. And you need to be able to answer and label all of these. So I'll call on you at random and somebody has to be able to tell me what A is, B, C, D, E, and F. Also need to be able to answer these questions specifically. All right, that brings us to the end, and I will see you guys at school.